And the chair is pleased to recognize uh, Mrs. Tremel from Luxembourg, Wisconsin, a tremendous uh, community of caring people. And thank you for coming here to Washington to give us your story. Um, thanks for having me. Um, my name is Judy Tremel. I'm here representing myself, my husband, Scott, and my three daughters, Caitlin, Emily, and Samantha. I'm also speaking on behalf of many other families that find themselves facing the same potentially life-threatening effects from exposure to contaminated water in northeast Wisconsin. I brought today, actually I could keep this, I brought today some water samples. I'm more of a, a presentation kind of person um, for your viewing. If you look at these three bottles of water, two of them are polluted with E. coli. One of them is not. Um, I present this to my um, local legislators, my state, and all of them would pick this bottle as the clean water. If I asked you to pick which bottle you think is the clean water of the three, which one would you pick? If you picked this one and you drank this, one, this water or gave it to your infant daughter, you would be poisoning her with E. coli. This is the new safe drinking water flowing into my house after the DNR made recommendations to the depth of my well water to be 400 feet. I would not give my children a bath in this water. I would not drink this water. This water has to be filtered with three different filtering systems to the tune of about $6,000. Like I was saying, my, my six-month-old daughter was poisoned. We went to the doctor. We found out that in the event um, that this illness would turn um, bad, the, the outcome for her would be death. To me, that's unconscionable. I had a safe water test on February 4th, 2004, and by March 2nd in a state-run lab test, I, I had measurable counts of E. coli at 2,800 parts per milliliter. That is 1,800 parts per milliliter more than what it takes to close a public beach in Wisconsin, in Algoma, and near our home. Um, right now, there are no laws um, protecting groundwater in Wisconsin or anywhere. I believe it's EPA's duty to install new laws that protect groundwater to address groundwater specifically. We all need groundwater to survive. It's unconscionable to me as a mother and as a taxpayer to see all the laws and regulations and to protect our lakes, streams, fish, and wildlife and absolutely no groundwater protection to protect people. Does anything, anybody here see what's wrong with this picture of protecting fish and not children? Does not, the environment, not that the environment isn't important, but does no one here see the problem that I see when our federal laws protect fish and not people? And I'm also appalled by my state's mismanagement or mismanagement of federal funding for enforcing the existing clean water rules <clears throat> that may be neither here nor there to Wisconsin or people here in Washington. But when parents have to call a stay-at-home mom from Luxembourg, Wisconsin to help remedy a polluted well that is sickening their children, something needs to be done, and these parents deserve better. We all deserve better. What I'm asking for from this committee and from the EPA, this government essentially, is protection from groundwater and surface water pollution from these tolerated practices. I'm a, I'm a hobby smoker. I am not allowed to smoke this in this building. Why? Because this government and our state, Wisconsin, imp impose smoking bans in public places and in restaurants and workplaces and in these federal buildings. Yet there are absolutely no laws to protect my groundwater from pollution from another source. You've all protected yourselves from the air pollution that secondhand smoke causes, yet nobody th seems to think that when somebody pollutes somebody else's well, that there needs to be any kind of law against that. Please give us the same protection you gave yourselves from the secondhand smoke and create new regulations for the large-scale farming operations that pollute our groundwater, sicken our fish families, and kill our fish. And please don't force us to have to wait for the tragedy to happen as what happened with the E. coli contaminated spinach a few years back. People had to die from that before anybody really paid attention. Just as it would be illegal for me to light this cigarette and force you to breathe in my smoke, 
it would just it should be just as illegal for someone to poison my groundwater supply. Thank you. Thank you, Judy, for your story and thank you for your written testimony as well.